everyone, Shelby Thomas. In today's video I'm going to show you two different techniques. The first being watercoloring effect using distressed stain and I'm also using one of the dilution sprays. And the second technique will be inlay die cutting using two-sided adhesive. Now I'm ready to watercolor using the distressed stain. You can see I've taped down the watercolor paper with some painter's tape to my cutting board and this allows me to move the paper around without getting my um, Vienna sausage fingers in it. So I've loaded up my six round paintbrush and what I'm doing with water is I'm painting or I'm mm, giving the ink guidelines where I want it to flow. The ink on watercolor paper is not going to travel very far without water. So once I've put the water down I've created channels for the ink to stay in and it'll move just based on where the water's edges are. And you can see why I like that cutting board. I can get the water to move a little more rapidly without my hands being in the way. And it dried at the end so I'm just going to soak it up with a little bit of, of a paper towel. And I'm going to heat set this and get ready for the next color. And I'm going to work side to side. This will keep the lines relatively even. So I'm going to work on the right side, then I'm going to go and work on the left side. I'm going to come in with the dilution spray. And it's going to work very similar, if not exactly, like the distress stain stains. It's reactive with water. And you can see I'm repeating what I did in the first line, and that's just creating a channel or an area for which I want the ink to flow. And I'm just dabbing in some ink on the side of my brush and letting the paper and gravity do its thing. The reason I'm drying in between layers is I want to have more of a distinct line between the colors. If you wanted more of a flow look, you could leave the ink wet and come in with the next color right next to it and they would have more of a blending line. Coming in with the next color of Distress Stain, which is Abandoned Coral. I guess I should have mentioned the other colors I used. The one in the center was Candy Apple, and the one to the right, the bright pink, the Delusion, was Bubblegum Pink. I'm following the exact same process I did on the other two lines. I'm outlining the pattern with the water, and then I'm using my brush to lay in the Abandoned Coral color, and letting gravity and the paper do, do its thing. And you can see it, it dried on me, so what I'm going to do is soak up a little bit of extra with a drier paintbrush, and then come with a smaller one and just drag it down and create like a channel for the ink to flow, and sopping up the extra with my paper towel. And I'm also gonna come up here and just dab in a, a bit of color. I think there was too much of a gap between the candied apple and the abandoned coral, so I'm coming in with a smaller brush and just applying and dabbing in a little bit more ink. Now the di next Distress Stain color I'm coming in with is Spun Sugar. I'm going to follow again the exact same process, and I've sped up the video in the last segment as well as this one. I think you're get probably getting a really good idea now. Again, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just making um, different lines on each side of the center line and using different colors. I'm also going to show you this time that you don't always have to use a round brush. I'm using a 3 8 flat and just again laying in the color gently and letting gravity and the paper do its thing. I also did not like how pale this color was. You almost couldn't see it. So I'm going to custom make a color. I've used the sponge sugar but then I've added some of the bubblegum pink dilution spray into it to make it a little bit darker. And now for the last color. I'm going to keep the custom combination I had made with the sponge sugar distress stain and the delusion bubble gum. And I've gone back to the round brush. And again, just repetition of the previous four passes. And this is the final one. Sopping up the extra with my paper towel. And I'm going to heat dry it. And now we're ready for the next step. The next step is going to be die cutting directly into the watercolor paper and I've pulled out three die cut words. I think I've used hugs and kisses and I'm using the removable scotch tape to tape them into place so that when I die cut them they're not shifting all over the place. And through the magic of video I'm going to run it through 
and it'll be die cut here shortly. Voila! So much easier on video how fast it goes. Here's everything all cut out. The die's up to the left and then the die cut to the bottom left. And what I've just shown you is two-sided adhesive foam from Scrapbook Adhesive. I'm just futzing around now to try to make sure there's enough room for all the words on this piece of two-sided adhesive foam. I've take off the front. I'm going to use the tweezers and put the words on there. In this technique, tweezers are your best friend so your fingers aren't getting stuck in everything. And then the next step in the process is to put the actual die back onto the die cut paper and line it up exactly. See my little little fingers are getting stuck everywhere and I'm fighting with the tape. So I decided to pull that back in so my fingers weren't sticking everywhere. And absolutely make sure that the die is right back over the word. You'll kind of feel it snap into place. When you have everything set up, you're going to run it again through the big shot. And I'm going to say, warning, warning, Will Robinson. Did you see what I did not do? I did not put that extra adhesive back on top and everything stuck to my plate. So at home, don't do what I did. Do as I say, put that paper back over top so it does not get stuck. So now we're ready to put the words into the paper. The next step is to apply adhesive to the back side of the front panel. I'm going to use both a dry adhesive tape runner as well as wet adhesive. And my wet adhesive I like to put around the words so those are nice and sealed against the card or the card base. And just using my fingers to tap down around those words. Make sure everything is nice and secure. Then I'm going to pick up the previously die cut words and ampersand and lay them right back into where I cut them from the front panel. And I had previously already taken the die cut words out. And if you notice, I like to lay down starting with the center and then working the edges out. I found that I get a little bit more even lay down when I do it that way versus starting either from the left side or the right side. And just using the tweezers to putz around and I noticed um, well I couldn't quite get that dot on the eye out so I'll improvise a little bit later with a sequin. And here I'm going into my battle again with adhesive. This should be renamed the video the battle of the adhesive. And laying in the word hugs right back into where it was previously cut. And voila there you have it. That's all she wrote, folks. As easy as that. You can see a little bit of dimension and it goes right back into where you cut it out. So I hope you learned a thing or two. If you have any questions, leave me a note. We'll see you next time. Thanks.